Next up, female reproductive system. What time are we out of here? Five? Oh, five? Ooh, I got to go quick. Now, the female reproductive system doesn't have as many funny things going on because the female reproductive system is serious business. Especially being a guy talking about this. I've got to be very serious. <laughs> All right. Now, there's a reason why we look at a side view. The side view is a more accurate depiction of where everything's at. You guys have probably seen... You see my art skills come into play. <laughs> I know. Looks kind of like a Star Wars character. It's more like a spaceship. It's a jester. Okay. <laughs> now, a lot of us have probably seen a picture that looks similar to this, like in a textbook. Okay. You got the ovaries. You got the fallopian tubes. You got the uterus here. Uh, the the vaginal canal right here. Cervix is right here. Okay. This is typically a lot of times the picture we'll see in a textbook. Now. It's not, it's not necessarily incorrect because you're seeing all the structures, but it's not how it's laid out inside the female's body because technically um, the ovaries are sitting right next to each other just above the uterus. So what we're actually seeing, if we're looking at it from the front, is something like, and I'll, I'll write it in red, is something like, And then you got the ovaries right here. And the fibrio over the top. Like this. Okay? So then either ovary can release an egg cell into either fallopian tube. Oops. Okay? The ovaries are actually sitting right next to each other. Okay? Kind of on top of the uterus. You can see in the side view picture over there. All right? We can put a little. So it kind of looks like a puppet, doesn't it? A little smiley face there. <laughs> Sorry, ladies, I'm not being serious. Can I apologize? Continue. So, we're going to use the side view because it's a little bit more accurate in terms of what we're looking at here. Okay. So, first up, we've got the ovary. The ovary is a lot like the male reproductive system or the testes because it secretes two hormones, progesterone and estrogen. We'll talk about those later. And it produces an egg cell. Now, the difference is, is that women have all the egg follicles that they're ever going to need in their lifetime when they're born. Okay. Each one of those egg follicles will turn into one egg cell once a month when they start menstruating, usually around 10, 11, 12 years old. Okay? That means they're producing one mature egg cell every month. Okay? You have hundreds of them in each ovary. You're not going to run out. Okay? But you're not going to create them from scratch. You've got them when you're born. Whatever you've got when you're born is all you're going to get. All right? Once you hit your mid-50s, typically, you go through this thing called menopause. Your hormone levels start to change. That changes the menstrual cycle. You quit releasing eggs. That's, that's that whole menopause, the change, all that stuff, using mid-50s, okay? So, ovaries produces the egg cell and two different hormones, okay? Next up, we have the fallopian tube. Up. The fallopian tube. And this tube goes from the ovary all the way around into the uterus, okay? What structure in the male does the fallopian tube a lot like? The vas deferens. It's carrying an egg cell. The fallopian tube carries an egg cell from one place to another. The vas deferens carries a sperm cell from one place to another. All right? Um, now, at the very top, and you, you guys don't have this, so I want you to get this in, is right here, I'm going to write it up here, is the fimbria. Right there, those finger-like projections. The best I can uh, describe those is they're like a sea anemone. They're like finger-like projections that wave back and forth, and they basically draw an egg cell into the fallopian tube. When the ovary releases it, it goes into the fallopian tube, and the fimbria primarily do that. Little finger-like projections wave back and forth, create a current. Uh, sometimes it happens, but rarely. The egg will basically just kind of go somewhere else and typically just get reabsorbed by the body. So, um, so that's the fimbria. Okay? The fimbria catches it, pulls in the fallopian tube. And then we go to the uterus. It shows up. The uterus and the endometrium. And here's where people start to get confused. So this is important to pay attention to. The uterus is this big pear like organ. Okay, now ladies, make a fist for me. Guys, you don't have to do this, you don't have one of these. Okay. Make a fist, real tight fist. Okay. Take your take your knuckle, your thumb knuckle, put it right on your belly button. Now, if we were to go in the middle of your body cavity, that's where your uterus is. That's about how big it is. 
That's where it's located. Okay. Now, this organ has to house a 18 to 20 inch, 8 to, well, 7 to, to 9 pound baby. Okay. So what's this going to do? It's going to get bigger. All right. It stretches. It gets bigger because that baby's going to be in there for 10 months. It's not going to be that big for 10 months, but the last three months it's going to be pretty big. Okay. So the, the uterus is very elastic. It stretches and then it shrinks back to its normal size once the baby's born. All right. So it's very elastic, very muscular. This is what contracts when a woman's having a baby and she talks about labor pains. This is what's contracting. It's very muscular. Okay. Inside the uterus is a lining called the endometrium. Okay, it's a tissue. It's not an organ. It's a tissue, and it's it's basically created from blood um, and and this this uh, endometrium tissue that grows every month. You grow a new one if you don't have a fertilized egg. Okay, that means if you don't have a fertilized egg, it gets rid of it every month and it grows a brand new one. And this is what we call the menstrual cycle. This building up and tearing down of the endometrium. Okay, now. What happens is, is if the egg cell gets to the uterus, there's some chemicals that happen. The brain reg registers the egg to get fertilized. Some chemical events happen, and basically the endometrium starts to tear away from the uterine lining. Okay, This is where we get menstrual blood from because it tears all those blood vessels open. Okay, And then during a girl's menstrual period, she's losing that menstrual blood and the endometrium at the same time. It's all flowing out of the body. That's the menstrual period. Okay, uh, Now, during that time, ladies, does this sound familiar? you got these things called cramps. Follow me? Okay. Now, guys, let's pretend that we have to do this or we would die. Okay, let's, let, let me preface that. Let's say our scrotum has a nice little zipper or some kind of seal on it. Okay? And so once a month, otherwise we'll die a very horrible death, we have to take out one testy. And you know those little potato peelers? And let's say we just have to peel the outside. And then we put it back in and we zip her up and we're good for a month. Okay. Now, if that were the case, guys, would we feel very good that day? No. Would we really want to come to school that day? Well, we and what if some, what if what what if some uh, insensitive girl would have been like, "Ooh, looks like someone peeled their testes today." Might we be a little bit impatient with those ladies? Probably. So the point being is, guys, this doesn't feel very good from what I've heard. I've never experienced it myself. Um, that that this is not a very comfortable time. We need to be sensitive to the women in our lives because this literally is a painful process that's going on and they have to endure that every single month. Is that why a girl wants to feel you every time, every other month? Maybe, angry Maybe you. Like, <laughs> Maybe you. But yeah, there's a whole lot of chemical things that go on with this too. I got to keep going. So next up, we've got this thing called the cervix. All right, The cervix is the opening to the uterus. All right, It's a different structure than the uterus. It's the opening of the uterus, and it looks kind of like an inner tube, all right? A little tiny one, okay? It's got a little tiny hole in the middle of it. That's where menstrual blood can flow out and sperm cells can flow in, okay? But if a girl gets pregnant, then that, that cervix will close up and, and the baby can't get out until the baby turns and starts to push its head against the cervix, and then the cervix is going to thin out and it's going to dilate and get bigger. Once it hits about 10 centimeters, it's big enough to get out of the way. The uterus stretches. The baby's head and shoulders can fit through. So when they talk about dilation, that's what we're talking about is the cervix getting out of the way so the baby can be born. All right? Hang tight. I've got a couple more things real quick. Next up, we have the vagina. A lot of times we call this the birth canal once the baby's being born. It's anywhere from 4 to 8 inches in depth. Um, and it's basically a muscular passageway that goes from the outside of the body to the cervix. It's really all it really does. There's not a ton of nerve endings inside there, but there are some. All right. And then that's covered by two folds that we call the labia. And they're broken down into labia majora and labia minora. The minora is in closer. And they basically cover the opening so that you don't get stuff in there that's not supposed to be in there. And then lastly, hang on, hang on. Lastly, we've got this thing called the clitoris. It's basically made up of erectile type tissue. It's got a lot of nerve endings. It's a real sensitive little organ. Uh, that basically provides sexual pleasure. All right? There's the female system. Sorry. Not as many jokes. See you guys later.